we've already talked about how we can use a histogram to show the distribution in our data. But what if you have multiple series in your data or different data series and you wanna show those distributions at the same time? Well, one option you have is something called the ridgeline plot. In today's episode of the One Chart at a Time video series, Jen Christensen from Scientific American is going to describe what the ridgeline plot is and the interesting story behind its origin. So I'll hand it over to Jen so you can learn more about the ridgeline plot. Thanks for inviting me to join you, John. The term ridgeline plot is generally used to refer to a style of chart that is composed of stacked, partially overlapping density plots. What does that mean? Well, a density plot is essentially a smoothed histogram. The underlying histogram represents the distribution of a particular variable. For example, say you wanted to see the pattern of peak subway ridership over the course of a day. You could start by creating a histogram or bar chart with bins across the y-axis for 1 a.m. to 2 a.m., 2 a.m. to 3 a.m., etc. Then fill those bins with the number of people who swiped their subway cards during that time interval. Then connect those bars or columns with a smooth line, and you likely see peaks during the morning and evening rush hours. But what if you wanted to get a sense of how, if at all, that pattern shifts or changes from month to month? Well, you can make 12 versions of that chart, one representing each month's worth of subway ridership data, and then stack them into a single ridgeline plot. One axis is shared, usually the horizontal axis. But since the meaning is held in the relative positions of peaks and valleys as a shift in position from category to category, labeling out the other axis with values isn't necessary. This allows for the compression of categories and even overlapping curves. Those overlaps are one of the key aesthetic features of a ridgeline plot. What are the pros? Well, it's a really efficient way to encourage readers to compare patterns across categories without wasting a lot of space. Overlapping curves shift focus from the shape of each curve to the patterns that the curves make together. What are the cons? Well, there's a high probability for obscuring data behind the overlapping zones, um, so it's not well suited for every data set. In some cases, a heat map might be a better choice. One of the most often cited primary inspiration points for the recent resurgence of this chart form is the cover art from Joy Division's Unknown Pleasures album cover. It also happens to be one of my personal favorite charts of all time. However, um, it does exhibit uh, stacked overlapping curves, allowing for a comparison across of patterns across categories. Um, but the example is not composed of stacked density plots. The curves here represent continuous data, not binned data. So to my mind, the current kind of widely accepted and official definition of ridgeline plots is too narrow and leaves out its most celebrated example. So what does the chart really show? The answers lie in the primary source, a 1970s PhD dissertation by Cornell University astrophysicist Harold D. Kraft. These lines represent incoming radio waves from Pulsar CP1919, as detected at Arecibo Observatory in Puerto Rico. Time for each line reads from left to right. 80 successive pulses are stacked from bottom to top. Peaks represent relatively strong radio signals. This particular plot shows data collected at a frequency of 318 megahertz. Here's a bit more background. A pulsar is a rapidly rotating neutron star that emits a radio frequency beam that sweeps through space like a lighthouse beacon. This animation demonstrates the concept, but not the correct timing. The pulses for CP1919 occur every 1.337 seconds, but only last for about four one hundredths of a second. Why show the data like this? Well, in the words of Harold Kraft, quote, we were looking at potentially drifting subpulses within the major pulse itself, which would then get back to the physics of what was causing the emission in the first place. 
So then the thought was, well, let's plot out a whole array of pulses and see if we can see particular patterns in there, end quote. Ultimately, this chart and several others like it for other pulsars in the same dissertation didn't provide clear evidence of shifting subpulses, but they did demonstrate that different pulsars emitted signature radio frequency patterns that were distinct. In 2015, I asked Kraft about the decision to remove the lines that fell behind peaks of the foreground curves. His response, quote, I don't really recall, but my bet is that the first one of these that I did, I didn't bother to block out the stuff, and I found that it was just too confusing, end quote. So he modified the Fortran code so that background lines would be blocked out, reducing the visual noise, and highlighting the position of the strongest signals. Back to you, John. And thanks for inviting me to share a bit about my favorite chart. And thanks to Jen for that great review of the Ridgeline plot and its origin in the Unknown Pleasures album from Joy Division. So I hope you enjoyed that little story about data visualization, and I hope you'll come back tomorrow to learn more about graphs that you can use to show distributions in your data.